So if the robots start doing all of our jobs, does that mean that they're also going to start doing all of the silly, nonsensical, busy work that we do every day? Hmm. Hey guys, it's Chris with Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. Because remember, subscribing is free. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the processes and techniques that we almost automatically use when we build guitars that may not be necessary. And this is uh, a, a, an issue that has come up uh, recently because I've, I've noticed that whenever I post up videos where I'm actually building a guitar or doing the work on a guitar, there are comments that will uh, get posted where viewers are wondering why I'm not doing certain techniques or processes in building the guitar. And it's, it's clear to me that some of these processes uh, viewers think are required in order to make uh, a, a proper guitar. And that's just not always the case. So what I want to do is I want to describe as an example two techniques or processes that you don't necessarily need to do. Now, if you're building a guitar as a fun hobby project, maybe just a one-off guitar, or maybe you just occasionally build guitars for yourself, by all means, go ahead and do these processes if you're not really worried about uh, taking the extra time or spending the extra money to do them. But if you're building guitars and are selling them and want to minimize your labor costs, these are some processes, and there may be others that you can think of. Maybe this video will inspire you to think through your process and, and eliminate some of the techniques that aren't necessary. But these are some processes that you can eliminate or potentially eliminate that will help you save time, which means save labor and save money, and thereby either reduce the cost of your guitar or realize more of a profit when you sell the guitar. So uh, let's jump into exactly which processes I'm talking about. And these are, like I said, just two examples. The first is fret fall off. It seems whenever I do a video where I'm leveling the frets, if I don't do fret fall off, somebody's going to ask the question why I didn't do it. And the simple answer is it wasn't necessary. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, fret fall off is when you level the upper frets from about the 18th fret to the end of the frets, or maybe the 15th fret, depending on how many frets you have on the fretboard. But from the 15th or 18th fret on to the end, each fret gets progressively shorter in height towards the bridge. It's, it's like it's ramped down to the bridge. And the reason for that is when you play the guitar, the strings are vibrating the most up in this area. So there's a greater potential for string buzz or fret buzz at that uh, upper area of the fretboard, especially if the action is set really low. So one of the techniques that we use to avoid that is we grind those frets down at that angle or that ramp down towards the bridge to give the strings a little bit more breathing room to vibrate so that they don't cause string buzz or fret buzz. However, it's not always necessary. I only will do it if after I have completely assembled the guitar, strung it up, intonated it, tuned it, and got it ready to play. If I notice some issues with fret buzz in this area, the first thing I'll do is I'll look for a single fret that might have a high spot. And if that's the case, I can just fix that. But if it becomes difficult to determine where the buzz is happening, maybe it's happening on several frets, then I might remove the strings and induce a little bit of fall off with my fret leveling beam just in this uh, upper area of the fretboard. But otherwise, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to just automatically do it for the sake of doing it. And, you know, this is something that 
uh, viewers have mentioned, they've asked me why I don't just automatically do that, and it's just because it takes extra time and it isn't always necessary. Now, the other example I wanted to give has to do with making my pickups. Sometimes I pot the pickups, and other times I don't. And lately, I've kind of gotten to where I'm just not potting them at all because I find it just isn't necessary. Potting the pickups is when you take the pickup and you immerse it into a bath of molten paraffin wax. That wax will seep into the windings of the coil. And then when you remove the pickup, the wax cools and hardens, and that prevents the pickup, the, the windings from vibrating. So when you're standing in front of a speaker cab and you're playing, the, the, the sound coming out of the speaker, those sound waves can hit the pickup and cause those windings to vibrate. So you get this, this feedback loop happening and that can cause microphonic squeal. So one of the ways that we uh, deal with that is we can take the pickup, immerse it into that wax, and when that wax cools and hardens, those uh, coil windings are encased in wax and can't vibrate. And this was a, a technique that arguably was uh, created by Eddie Van Halen back in the 80s. He would stand up on stage and play his guitar, they didn't, he would experience that microphonic feedback. So what he did was is he would take his pickups and he would melt some paraffin wax into a, an empty coffee can and then he would dip the uh, pickups into that wax to uh, get them get that wax to soak into the to the coil windings and harden. And of course, he ruined a few pickups along the way trying to get the temperature just right. But eventually, he was successful in doing this. Well, a lot of people heard about it and thought, "Hey, that sounds like a great idea." So all of a sudden, the idea spread, and next thing you know. Everyone who makes pickups is wax potting their pickups. But the reality is, it doesn't need to be done if the coil winding is tight enough to where it's not gonna vibrate. And loose coils are common with quickly and cheaply made pickups. But potting the pickup is only necessary if it's squealing or if it's causing microphonic feedback. If it isn't, why bother doing it? It isn't necessary. Now I make all my own pickups. So when I wind the coils, I make sure to put enough tension on the wire to prevent the wire coil, the coil wire from vibrating when sound waves are coming out of the speaker. It's also important to remember that when Eddie Van Halen was playing his guitars, he was standing in front of a huge stack of speakers that were just blasting out volume. Most of us are not playing guitars in that kind of an environment. So the chances of it vibrating and causing microphonic uh, feedback is significantly less. It's really only gonna be an issue if you're standing in front of a huge stack of speakers. So that's just another technique that I don't automatically do because in most cases it isn't going to be necessary. But like I said, if you're just building one guitar as a hobby project, by all means do it. You're not going to be uh, losing anything. But if you're, you're selling guitars and trying to make a profit, all those little techniques, and there may be others that you can think of if you kind of walk yourself through your process that you may be able to avoid and save um, your customers some money and at the same time realize a bit more of a profit. But uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, if you can think of other processes that might not be necessary that we could avoid and maybe only do after the guitar is finished and is suddenly uh, a, a, a problem solving solution that uh, would make sense to do, uh, post it down in the comment section below. Uh, tell us what that, that process or technique is and why you think it can be avoided during the construction of the guitar. I think that might be really interesting and it would be really helpful to other folks out there who are planning to build a guitar and are trying to uh, establish what their um, 
workflow is going to be and hoping to avoid certain techniques and processes to simplify the whole construction process of their guitar. So uh, until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next episode.